Hi, my name is Georgi Radulov and I'll discuss with you the self-biased inverter-based amplifier. This is an example of a common source amplifier, a very simple example. It uses only two transistors, an NMOS and a PMOS transistor. And the architecture stacks these two transistors uh, from zero to um, VDD. Because uh, we stack only two transistors from 0 to VDD, it makes um, this architecture very suitable for uh, using in modern uh, IC processes that use reduced voltage headroom. Actually, in my examples later, I will uh, design an inverter based amplifier that is uh, uh, using power supply of only one volt. The structure is self-biased through this resistor that connects from the input to the output. So we are setting our own operation mode and we are biasing the transistors um, uh, uh, with, this, uh, with this resistor. Uh, because the input and the output are set um, by the structure itself, then we have to decouple from the biasing, from the output biasing point of the driver of the preceding stage. And this is done through these decoupling capacitors. So basically it decouples the DC setting here at the output of the driver, preceding uh, stage driver and the input of our uh, stage. So this means that the structure will amplify only AC signals. If we uh, choose this decoupling capacitor CIC sufficiently large, we can operate and amplify sufficiently low frequencies of the input signal. So how does this uh, work? Here um, I consider the basics and uh, write down to the basic equations that govern the operation of the structure. We assume that uh, the transistors are properly biased in their saturation point. So then the equations for the current in saturation will apply for the NMOS transistor and for the PMOS transistor. They uh, depend on some uh, technological constants, the mobility of the carriers, electrons in the case of NMOS transistors and holes in the case of PMOS transistors, C oxide, and the uh, uh, dimensions of the transistors and these are the main um, design parameters for the amplifier which is the width of the transistor and the length of the transistor for the NMOS case and the width and length for the transistor for the PMOS case. Then we have of course the overdrive voltage or which shows how much the transistor is turned on. This is the difference between the input voltage, gate source voltage, minus the threshold voltage. So this is the gate source voltage, this is the gate, this is the source, and this is the drain, minus the threshold voltage is showing how much we turn on the transistor. This uh, voltage, uh, VGS minus threshold voltage is called the overdrive voltage, square. Here for the PMOS transistor, of course, it's very similar, just that we have to consider the source gate voltage instead of gate source voltage. And then we have this term, which models the channel length modulation effect in saturation. So uh, you know that um, in saturation, the current reaches certain level of uh, I sat, I saturation. And then beyond that, uh, as we drive the transistor deeper in saturation by increasing the drain source voltage. Uh, uh, ideally, there would be no dependence on the uh, train, of, of the current on the drain source voltage, hence the name of the region of operation saturation. But in practice, there is. And this dependence comes from the channel length modulation effect. So basically, the channel of the transistor pinches off and it reduces by an amount of delta I if we apply uh, higher drain source voltages, for example, for the NMOS transistor. So effectively, the channel reduces uh, 
which makes the channel shorter for higher drain source voltages, which effectively increases the current. This gives rise to a very important small signal parameter of uh, the device called the output resistance. The output resistance shows how the current will change if we change the output uh, uh, voltage uh, in saturation region. So the output resistance is the inverse of the output conductance, 1 over GDS, and the output conductance can be found as can be found as the derivative of the current with respect to the drain source voltage, with respect to the drain source voltage. So basically how the current will change for a small change in the output voltage drain source. So all we need to do is to take the derivative with respect to the drain source voltage of this equation. And if we do this, then rewrite it for the output resistance, we will see that the output resistance depends on 1 divided by lambda, the channel length modulation effect coefficient, lambda, and the, uh, and the current. Yeah? So lambda from uh, this model is uh, delta L divided by L div uh, times 1 uh, divided by VDS. So if we want to have small lambda, hence high output resistance, in other words, if we want to have less dependence of the current on the output uh, voltage VDS, we will have to design for large lengths. Yeah? The other uh, parameter here in the output uh, resistance equation is the current. We want to have small current if we want to have high output resistance. And the current depends, of course, on the W, the width of the transistor, and the length of the transistor. So, if we just take the proportionality constants to know um, uh, the dependence, uh, we can write that the output resistance is proportional to the square of the length of the transistor and inversely proportional to the width of the transistor. Yeah. The other very important parameter of the small signal parameter of the transistor is the transconductance. And the transconductance gives how the current changes for a small change in the input voltage VGS. And we can derive this transconductance by taking the derivative of this equation with respect to the input voltage VGS. If you do this, you, you have to get something like, like this, this expression. And the important thing which I want to concentrate on is the W over L, which means that for high transconductance, uh, we will have to do uh, white transistors and we will have to do also short transistors. These two parameters, the transconductors and the resistance, will be shown in the later slides. How uh, will be shown how they define the gain of the structure. So let's see this. Um, here, imagine that uh, the structures are uh, properly biased, and then the transistors are in saturation. So we can use the large signal. Um, uh, uh, equations for the current in saturation. Now let's uh, let's imagine if the input voltage changes increases a little bit by the amount of delta V in. This will actually increase here the gate source voltage, which is the input voltage of the NMOS transistor, by an amount of delta V in. This will lead to an increase of the current by delta I n. Now, for the PMOS transistor, it is uh, the opposite, because an increase in the input voltage is an increase in the gate, which actually decreases the source gate voltage. So here, delta V in participates with the negative sign, and this will have to lead to a decrease of the current of the PMOS transistor by minus delta IP. But the two transistors are stacked so they share the same current, the current must be the same. In order to equate the currents and still accommodate the changes in their gate source voltage, the output voltage, source drain and drain source voltage will have to change. Well, the sources are here at VDD 
for the PMOS and ground for the NMOS. So the voltage that needs to change is the output voltage or the drain voltages of the two, devi the two devices. Because this current increases and this current decreases, the drain the drain source voltage will have to decrease while the source drain voltage here for the PMOS transistor will have to increase, which effectively means that delta V out will have to decrease. So we started with increasing the input voltage and we ended up with decreasing the output voltage. In between there are all these coefficients. So if we properly choose the coefficients, we can realize gain in the sense of that it, the delta of the V in yeah, is answered with a larger delta of V out. This is the gain. Now, the problem here to, to analyze it with this equation, the problem is that these equations are nonlinear equations. So, um, if we write down, expand all these equations, uh, it will be complicated and messy. Therefore, we can make the small signal assumption. We assume that this change delta V in is small with respect to the large signal biasing parameters such as VDD and ground. If this change delta V in is sufficiently small, we can linearize and um, uh, we can uh, use only linear equations, the small signal parameters, uh, such as the transformation of current small signal current into small signal voltage, such as the air out, the output resistance, and the transconductance of the device or the transformation of a small signal voltage variation at the input to uh, current at uh, the output. Now, the same example with uh, a little bit of increasing delta V in, but then expressed with small signal parameters. So, a small signal change increase at the input for the NMOS transistor will lead to a small change increase of the output current IN and it will be equal to delta V in times the transconductance GM. Now for the PMOS transistor this increase of the input vo of the V in is actually decrease of its source gate voltage. So there will be change in the uh, output current or modulation of the output current, but with the opposite sign. So I will draw it in the opposite direction. And it will be again equal to GMP times the uh, V in. Now um, you see that these two currents are in the opposite uh, direction. So their excess current uh, will have to be transformed to an uh, um, voltage through the impedance at this node, at the output node. So what is the impedance of this output node? We have the channel length modulation effect which defines the output resistances of um, the PMOS transistor and the output resistance of the NMOS transistor. So these two transistors can be considered in parallel because for small signal here we do not have a small signal component and hence this is a small signal ground and uh, this is the ground no signal component uh, here so then um, the excess current the current differences will have to flow from through this uh, output resistance uh, and then it will be transformed to change in the voltage so the change delta v out of the uh, of the voltage will be the change of the currents or the excess current uh, between the N transistor and the P transistor times the output resistance R out of this of this node. This is the transformation of current into voltage. And uh, the output resistance, of course, is the R out P in parallel with R out N. Now, if we expand also the expressions of the currents as dependence of the input voltage times the transconductance, small signal parameter of the transistor's transconductance, 
uh, then we have an expression of the output voltage with respect to the input uh, to the input voltage of course they're in the opposite directions there is a minus sign we'll derive this now what we see is that um, there are two parameters uh, that define uh, actually the the gain uh, between the from the input to the output and one is the transconductance of the device which is gmn plus gmp and the output resistance which is r out p in parallel with r out n um, gm and r out if we want to have high gain so to increase delta v out we need to increase gm and to increase r out now um, to increase gm we can increase w but if we increase w we will reduce r out so if we see the product gm r out actually w will cancel out l here will cancel but here is in second uh, power so one l will remain which means that to increase the product gm r out we will increase the length of these transistors uh, okay so um, let's see how the small signal um, equivalent circuit uh, is constructed uh, and uh, actually derive the exact expression for the gain now the NMOS transistor so we have here v in at the input and we have here at the output v out the small signal um, equivalent model for an NMOS transistor is just a current source so to ground uh, with a value of gm v in so this is for the n transistor so this will be here the drain from the drain to the source so this here is v out and then this current source small signal current source of course depends on the input voltage through the transconductance parameter so gmn times v in uh, now we have also the channel length modulation effect which is modeled as an output resistance to ground air out so this will be air out n to ground this side we have this transistor the pmos transistor we saw that for the same change of v in the source gate voltage of pmos transistor reduces hence the modulation of the current is in the opposite direction so i can draw it in the opposite direction like this going from the output to v now vdd for small signal equivalent is ground this will be simply ground and this is because um uh, there is lack of signal component at uh, at uh, uh, the the source here at vdd hence i can substitute vdd with ground the other uh explanation is that here is an independent here is the power supply voltage which is vdd and it's independent from v in the small signal voltage that i consider and then the rule is that i have to short it hence for small signal vdd is drawn as ground so here is the source is at ground the drain is at the output and i have also the channel length modulation effect which is kind of parallel to the drain source which is r o p yeah now i have also here in this uh, small signal diagram uh, i have also all the parasitic capacitances source gate gate source drain bulk. i can sum up all these and just express them as uh, one common uh, capacitance c out this c out can also accommodate any load capacitance here as load 
Uh, so this will be the total capacitance that, that I have at the end. Of course, Seagate drain is a special capacitance because it connects the input to the output. So I have to draw it uh, here. Seagate drain. And this Seagate drain is actually the sum of the parasitic uh, Seagate drain of the PMOS and the uh, Seagate drain of the NMOS. Uh, now, for the moment, just to simplify the analysis, I will ignore this Seagate drain because it's very small. Later, if I design my circuits, I can re discuss it and reconsider it, but now uh, I, will, I will simply ignore it. Now, um, this is now the, uh, if, I, if I now transform the output resistances into one uh, total output resistance, which will be air out P in parallel with air out N. I'll get this. C out sums up all the capacitances. And then these two current sources, they both depend on the input voltage. So I can simply group them as V input and then for the GM, the big GM, the transconductors of the whole stage, it will be just the sum of the NMOS and the PMOS. Yeah. Now this is the small signal equivalent model. And then um, let's change the color. Uh, I can write the Kirchhoff current law, Kirchhoff current law for this node. And the Kirchhoff current law says that the sum of all currents so this current and this current through the resistor and the current through the capacitor must be must be zero. So now I can write here um, the first current V in times GM plus the current through the resistor which is V out divided by R out uh, plus the current through the uh, capacitance, which is J omega C out times V out is zero. Now, if I rewrite this uh, equation to express the ratio between the output voltage V out and the input V in, I will get this expression. First of all, I have minus, which reflects for the inversion that we already saw in the previous slides. And then I have GMR out, which is called the DC gain for very low frequency signals. So if omega, the signal that I'm evaluating is very, very small, then this expression will be almost uh, zero. And then the gain will be GMR out. Yeah, so this is just like ignoring the output capacitance for very low frequency signals. Now, if omega increases, my gain decreases because this point, this, this part will increase and it will divide the gain. So, um, now this is the expression for uh, the gain in frequency uh, uh, in frequency domain of a single stage um, common source amplifier. Now uh, let's consider the frequency uh, behavior, only the amplitude, how this gain changes. So I can draw here one of the body plots which considers the amplitude of the gain yeah, versus the frequency f. Yeah, and uh, of course, keep in mind that W omega is 2 pi F. So to take the uh, magnitude of uh, the gain, uh, here you have to get rid of uh, the J, and then you consider in this complex expression the denominator only the, uh, the magnitude of this vector, which is square root of 1 square plus uh, what we have in the imaginary part uh, square. 
And now there are two important uh, frequencies here. Uh, the first uh, consideration is when f is zero. When f is zero, this is zero, the denominator is one, so the gain is simply gm r out. Yeah, I will remind you the GM is the total transconductance of the stage, which is the sum of the transconductances of the NMOS and the PMOS. And R out is the impedance level at this node at the output, which is the output resistance of the NMOS in parallel with the output resistance in the PMOS. Now, if my frequency increases, this term will increase because the frequency increases. So now I will divide the DC gain, the static gain, to something which is more than one. Yeah? So then it will decrease. If I plot this in dB scale, there will be one important frequency called the minus 3 dB frequency. and this decreases minus 3 dB uh, when um, and it's also called the corner frequency why is this important? because in this region from 0 to this corner frequency the dominant part was this one frequency was very small and we can assume here that, that the gain was only gm r out now at this frequency, the corner frequency, this part here that we have becomes comparable to this one. So and this happens when 2pf at this special frequency uh, fb c out r out, this is called also the <coughs> time constant uh, of the node, is equal to one. Then this part then is equal to this part. They are both comparable in the denominator, the two factors. And this this is at a frequency, special frequency of uh, 1 divided by 2p co r out. Then beyond this, I can say that this uh, part increases and it becomes more than 1 and then I can ignore the one. Uh, so if I if I plot in dB, it will be just like a linear uh, decrease by a, a rate of minus 20 dB per decay. Yeah. So then I can just in this section of the characteristic, I can forget about this one square and then my relationship for the gain will be simply uh, can be expressed as GMR out G, G M R out divided by uh, omega C out R out. Then there is a special frequency in which the gain in logarithmic scale will be 0 dB. This means that the output is equal the uh, small signal output is equal to the small signal uh, input. And this is the point uh, beyond which the amplifier stops amplifying. So from zero to this special frequency, uh, the amplifier amplifies. Also, also this structure amplifies the signal. The output signal is larger than the input signal. Beyond this, the gain is less than one or in dB scale zero and the amplifier becomes an attenuator. And this frequency is called omega t. Uh, Ft, Ft. So this uh, frequency is uh, the frequency for which the gain is equal to 1. So if at the higher frequency portion, this portion, the gain can be expressed as GMR out uh, divided by omega CR out, then I can cancel these two and then I can ask what is the frequency for which this is 1. So this is 2pf, then when this comes here, we find this special frequency to be gm divided by 2pc out. And now let's uh, reflect. Uh, if we want high output, a uh, high uh, gain at low frequencies, we want 
gm and air out igm and air out and if we want white signal bandwidth so basically to extend the uh, ft to higher frequencies we want high gm yeah and low c out of course now let's see uh, how we can uh, do this uh, but of course before that we will have to bias the structure in the proper uh, operation mode so for this uh, let's take now uh, leave the small signal analysis and uh, engage with the biasing condition so uh, large signals now we have the structure like this and uh, we plot here uh, v in and versus v out and then we'll consider what would be v out if we sweep v in from zero to vdd if v in is at zero so this is zero the gate source voltage of the nmos transistor is uh, zero and we have very large source gate voltage for the pmos transistor uh, so um, the nmos transistor will be like a switch that is turned off uh, and uh, the pmos transistor will be like a switch that is turned on and uh, the pmos transistor will pull v out to vdd Hence, for zero, the output that be, will be at VDT for zero in. As we increase the V in, at certain point, we'll cross the threshold voltage of the NMOS transistor. Beyond this voltage, the transistor, the NMOS transistor will start turning on and conduct a little bit current, and then has pulling down the uh, uh, output voltage from VDD to uh, something lower. Then uh, uh, at this point, uh, in this region, both transistors are conducting and both transistors are actually in saturation uh, region. Beyond this uh, uh, point, when the input is uh, very large, then the NMOS transistor is turned on and it pulls the output uh, voltage to ground, but the PMOS transistor is turned off, so it cannot pull the output to VDD, hence the output goes to VDD. Now, um, this is the, the relationship between the input voltage for large signal and the output voltage through the um, inverter. Now, if uh, we consider a resistor that is connecting, that is connecting the input and the output, it will have a characteristic which is just a line 45 degrees like this. And uh, what if you consider only the, the resistors, what is at the input, you'll see it at the output. Yeah. So if you have only this structure like this, the solution, if you if you just leave it, decouple it from the from the um, input stage, uh, the solution will be just the crossing of the two transfer functions of the transfer function of the inverter through the transistors and the transfer function of uh, the uh, resistor so then the structure will be self-biased at this point for this uh, input and for it to correspond to this this output and this will be the biasing point of the transistor we don't want that the preceding stage messes with this biasing point so this is why we would separate the our in, uh, our inverter from uh, the preceding stage v in through a very large ac coupling uh, uh, capacitor so it will block the dc biasing point uh, and it will pass um, ac signals some even low frequency uh, signals and then uh, the structure at the gate will be passed at this point um, and the AC coupling capacitor will still allow an input voltage which is you know like like AC voltage to go and modulate uh, the gates uh, this AC voltage will be of course uh, amplified and will appear as AC output uh, voltage. So this will be then the biasing point. 
we'll design this structure and um, here uh, we can review the uh, strategy for the AC coupling we'll choose uh, a capacitor which is extremely large so that uh, it blocks DC but it lets uh, even lower frequency signals and for uh, the self-biasing resistor we'll choose a resistor which is also extremely large so that uh, it creates um, uh, very long time constants for even lower frequencies and hence uh, it uh, will not uh, affect uh, the performance and the, uh, the performance of the structure and hence our uh, analysis. So for very uh, for any frequencies we can consider then um, the large CAC capacitor as uh, uh, short circuit and the large RB biasing uh, resistor, self biasing resistor as an open circuit. And uh, this is how the uh, for AC um, for AC, AC signals we can uh, simply consider only the inverter. So basically the PMOS and the NMOS transistors. And we'll design this in cadence. We'll consider two main um, design parameters, which are the W and the length of the transistors for the PMOS transistors and W and length for the NMOS transistor. Um, now the biasing point it's locked because due to thanks to the self uh, to the self biasing. And this leaves us with uh, limited design uh, parameters, which makes it uh, an easy amplifier to design. Now, the strategy will be if we want to get the DC gain, so I'll return here, to get sufficient DC gain, we will increase the length of the transistors, we will increase basically the output resistance. Uh, in this way and to get the bandwidth to increase the bandwidth we will increase the W of the transistors yeah because we will then increase GM this will be the strategy so let's now uh, design an inverter based amplifier we will do this in uh, the uh, technology 45 nanometer GPDK everything is uh, uh, configured for us so we start with creating a new cell inverter amp and uh, we'll enter the components so we go to uh, most devices we take this one now um, the length of the NMOS will be parameterized L the finger width will be a double unit again a parameter so the width of the transistor will be based on fingers these are like parallel structures and then the total width of the device is the product of the number of fingers times the the width of one finger uh, so we will parameterize uh, both and uh, the length is L and it seems everything is configured and we'll do the same but then also for the PMOS transistors L and then the finger root is unit and the same number of fingers now for the PMOS transistor is, uh, um, it's advisable that um, it is uh, structurally larger than uh, the NMOS transistor and the reason for this is that the NMOS transistor uh, uses electrons as uh, main carriers for their channel in their channel uh, and uh, the mobility of the electrons is uh, higher than the mobility of the holes in the PMOS transistors we have holes which means that um, for the same structure and the same biasing uh, uh, conditions the PMOS transistor will output less current uh, because the mobility of the holes is lower than the mobility of uh, electrons less current than the NMOS transistor so to balance the current density of the NMOS transistor and the PMOS transistor or in other words uh, to position the optimal biasing point of uh, the uh, inverter based amplifier um, in the middle uh, we need to balance the uh, NMOS and the PMOS transistor to compensate for the less mobility of the holes we designed the PMOS transistor structurally with uh, wider width than the NMOS transistor so this is why um, 
we take uh, this coefficient of 2 which assumes that the, in this case the mobility of the host is twice uh, lower than the mobility of the electrons. Of course at the end of your design cycle you can optimize for this uh, coefficient but for now we'll just take it as it is. Two. All right so here it is now let's connect it. Okay and then the books are connected to the sources this is the easiest and the safest option. Ground. I is to get an instance and then BDP. This is for the power supply. I need a load, a capacity flow. I will design for 150 part to have a design case which is realistic. And uh, that's it. So the first simulation that I'll show is. Um, this is sweep simulation, just to see the transfer characteristics. Uh, the transfer characteristic of uh, an inverter. So let's uh, take a DC block with DC. And then the input voltage will be parameterized to read in. So this will be for my DC sweep simulation. The signal will give some names, will be output, will be out. And for input read in. Like this and then name of that. Okay, so now our goal is to uh, so now let's uh, run a simulation. The first simulation that we run is a DC sweep simulation, but before that we have to initialize uh, the variables. So these are the fingers, the length and uh, input voltage and the unit of uh, W. The fingers is uh, how many transistors in parallel we will use. We start with something small. This is a parameter for uh, the total width and we'll investigate this when we consider the uh, bandwidth, the speed of the amplifier. So we start with something small like 2 as an advice for you. Always use uh, even a uh, number of fingers. So for the length, let's start with the minimum length of 45 nanometer. Uh, the input is something that will sweep. And then um, here is just uh, also a default uh, initial value to, to have it about the total width 10 times of uh, the length. Uh, then um, the first uh, simulation that we will run is uh, DC sweep. And we'll sweep uh, the input parameter from um, 0 to, to 1. So this is the input voltage. We'll sweep from 0 to 1 and we'll monitor the, the output. And um, number of steps, like 100 steps. Uh, and then we'll plot the output voltage. And uh, let's see what we get. Here it is. This is the transfer characteristic of an inverter. For low input voltages, the uh, output is high, and for high input voltages, the output is low. What's interesting is here this transition. This is the interesting part because uh, when we eventually add the self biasing resistor, we'll uh, bias the structure around uh, here, around the middle. And the slope of this transition will give us the static gain. So we can now have an estimation about uh, this static gain. So let's see, uh, I'll mark it and I'll put it in the, in the uh, calculator. So now I'm interested in uh, uh, seeing uh, the derivative. Uh, let's see, here it is, the derivative. So the maximum is uh, 19.3 and it's negative because it's an inverter, inverting structure. So let's uh, get this minus and plot it in the db scale, something like this. And this is then the gain of the structure in uh, dBs. So we have 25.7 uh, dB. Let's aim for 30. Then uh, uh, I can I'm interested only in the 
highest value because eventually I will bias it there and I'll add this to my uh, to my outputs so the next time that I will run this simulation I can get directly only the the maximum gain 25.7 this number here so now I want to boost this and get at least 30 dB um, now this means that I need to make the transfer characteristic sharper and to, to make it sharper I need to decrease the channel length uh, modulation effect to do this I need transistors with longer lengths in other words said I need to increase the output resistance of the amplifier at the output so uh, I will sweep now the lengths of the transistors and I will monitor the maximum gain that I can achieve Now I'll, I'll sweep from 45 nanometer to 1 micro the lens in 10 steps and uh, I will record the maximum gain that uh, I achieve. So what I expect is uh, the longer the, the lens, the higher the output resistance and um, the higher the static gain. So um, let's see what I'll get from the simulations. Here it is. So this is um, this is the the maximum gain that I can get in dB scale if I sweep the lens. So I start with with a low and low uh, gain, and as I increase the lens, I improve the output resistance of the transistors, hence the output resistance of the total structure, and the DC gain is uh, the product of GM times R out. If air out improves, then the uh, gain uh, gain improves. All right, so I will not overdo it because uh, I know that uh, uh, the bigger the structure of the transistor, so the longer the length of the transistor, the more positive capacitance uh, I will have, and uh, um, my uh, signal bandwidth will be limited when I run the AC simulation. So now I'll limit myself to about 250. Yeah, so 250 nano will be. Uh, oh no i can uh, refine this but i know that 200 nano will give me uh will give me again that um, will be above 30. so if i just rerun it you can see here that yeah i have a gain of 30. uh okay so i got my uh, static uh, uh, gain which is uh, above 30. now let's run another simulation which is uh, the ac simulation and then evaluate, assess the performance of the, the structure at uh, uh, frequency uh, domain. So uh, from 10K, uh, 1K to 10 gig, something like this. Now, of course, in my simulation, in my uh, schematic, I need to make changes. The first change that I need is uh, the biasing, self-biasing. So I use this resistor and I'll get something like very one mega, something that will, uh, uh, you can optimize later for this and I'll just choose now something which is extremely big so that uh, for AC signals I can consider only the, the transistor structures only the transistor structures and not the cell biasing part then I will also need to decouple the input so I need a capacitor AC coupling capacitor which is also very large so this will be um, like like one now all right and I need AC source of course here to 
be seen and then AC magnitude 1 volt it is it's so now this simulation this simulation is uh, uh, really made for AC signals yeah? so this will be the AC source and uh, yeah so this, this, this should do fine then uh, here is uh, the simulation then I will um, sweep the AC frequency from 1k to n giga and I will monitor uh, the output voltage which directly gives me the gain because the input is 1 volt AC it's linearized uh, simulation so this is linear simulation um all right so let's uh, let's see what I'll get oh I have to save it and then rerun it yeah here it is so you see in the, in the beginning here I have uh, some sort of a uh, some sort of a stop band because uh, of the choice of my capacitor. So if I just increase it, just improve. Yeah, all right. Then if I, if I choose even bigger, it will it will cover the, the one kilohertz range. All right, I have to save it. Here it is. All right. So now uh, twenty six uh, is the magnitude. Of the I can also increase this one to avoid. Yeah, and now now this is is better. Uh, a little bit higher than what I had in uh, the DC simulation. So now uh, let's see where is the 3 dB uh, frequency. So this is something like uh, start from 32. Uh, yeah, I need to plot this, of course, in dB scale. Here it is. Yeah. So this is what what was uh, predicted by uh, the DC simulation. And then uh, it reduces so around 27, something around here. This is the 3dB frequency, and it is uh, around 8 uh, 8 megahertz. So the zero is uh, the the FT is uh, around. Uh, Okay, so now you can see that uh, if I want to improve, um, if I want to improve now the uh, the bandwidth, I need to uh, sweep the W. This is from the formulas because the um, the unit gain uh, frequency FT is uh, depends on uh, is proportional to GM divided by C out. So. Uh, GM is of course uh, proportional to the W, the total W. So if I now sweep uh, the number of fingers, say from uh, 2 to, I don't know, 32, and then uh, say times 2 simulation, and then I plot V out, okay? Then I'll see, I can see what's going on with. Uh, with the signal bandwidth because now the total width is the number of fingers times the unit width and uh, as I increase uh, W uh, GM uh, uh, GM will increase so yeah here it is so I have uh, here fingers 2 4 8 16 32 and then you can see that I'm pushing uh, the frequency, the, the bandwidth to higher, higher, higher. The change in the uh, in the uh, DC gain is almost negligible. Now I need also to plot it in dB. I thought it, I plotted it, but let's define it. Go to yes, just get it back. So it is, it is here. Can I plot it? Yes, here it is. So this is now in dB, the gain in dB, and then this is uh, the DC gain here and then for different uh, total w's and i sweep the w through the number of fingers and the more fingers uh, i uh, choose the bigger transistor structure i get i increase uh, w and uh, if w increases gm increases there is almost uh, no effect on the static gain but the bandwidth uh, increases because the bandwidth uh, uh, relates to GM, the unit gain bandwidth frequency, here this frequency, 
uh, is proportional to GM divided by C out, where C out is, of course, the uh, output uh, capacitance. At the moment, you can see that it's dominated by the load, 100 femtom that uh, we have. Uh, but um, you can see here that if I further increase, uh, so basically, if I further increase uh, the number of fingers, so say from two to say 4096, there will be a moment when the structure will start uh, self loading. So let's see the simulation. Here it is. So when the number of fingers get extremely high, the total width of the device uh, is uh, bigger, the parasitic capacitances are bigger, and then they are self-loading the amplifier. So basically now the parasitic capacitances of the transistor is in the order of uh, hundreds of femtom. So this is why if I increase uh, the width beyond these numbers, Indeed, GM increases, but also C out increases. So they kind of compensate each other. And um, I reach actually the limit of uh, the the bandwidth. So I can I can actually what it. So uh, one second, uh, this is it. I can run the AC simulation to even higher. The number of fingers, eight. Let's just run one simulation like this. And here it is. So basically, it is signal the unity gain bandwidth is 36 gigahertz. Um, all right, so uh, zero dB, 30 gigahertz, 30 gigahertz. All right, now, um, let's uh, run uh, the last type of simulation. So this, uh, say, say we. We choose this is oh no, I don't let's put it something more realistic like uh, 64 number of fingers. Just run it. 30 dB gain and then the unity gain bandwidth frequency is six gigahertz. Okay. So now if I have a signal which is uh, let's see here uh, like one megahertz or ten megahertz signal, I should be able to get about 30 dB gain. Alright? So uh, this will be the transient simulation. Uh, I can change this to uh, not this here. So basically, the the amplitude is uh, no, something very small, like one micro, and then the frequency is uh, ten megahertz. All right, and now I run. Tension simulation. Um, one micro. And then I'm going to the output and to the input. I expect to see about 30 times amplification and the inversion. Uh, all right, so uh, let's separate this like this. So uh, this is the input, and there is uh, one micro amplitude. So the delta in y is uh, two micron, about two micron. So here I'm expecting sixty, which is which is about gain of thirty. Okay, so um, you see now the. Uh, inverter based uh, amplifier, self biased uh, version. Um, of course, these are now uh, not realistic uh, uh, values for the biasing, so this uh, would be practice something like uh, tens of K or uh, um, or uh, 100K, something of, of, of this order, and this would be much, much less like like 1 pico or even 3 400, uh, depending on the frequencies. There. But here the point is that uh, this is a very simple structure, it uh, uh, is self biased. So uh, many design parameters such as biasing point and uh, the current um, are automatically set by the structure through cell biasing. And we as designers, uh, we are left with uh, only a few parameters, W and L of the transistors. I recommend uh, 
as a start. So thank you very much for your attention.